Hello and welcome. This is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And in today's training, I've got an amazing, unique user password reset. We're going to teach you how to allow users the ability to reset their own passwords completely automatically. So it's going to be a great and unique training. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining us today. I've got a really cool training and this is gonna allow you to give your users the possibility to reset their own passwords. Of course, as an administrator, you would allow or disallow this. We're gonna add this setting. In fact, we're gonna be taking off from one of the trainings that we had done previously. This is gonna be the Share and Sync Workbook. And if you'll remember uh, previously, uh, back on April, so that was about, uh, what, six months ago or something, we did how to share and sync your macro enabled Excel workbook. We're gonna take off from this workbook. If you haven't seen this video, we built this workbook from scratch, allowing users to share and sync their macro enabled workbook from around the world with unlimited users simultaneously without using the shared workbook. So if you haven't yet seen this video, of course, I'll include the link down in the description below. It's a great, uh, so far we've got about 13,000 views on it. It's about average, but I'd like to see a lot more because it is a really groundbreaking training. And uh, this video, we, we basically allow users to be built a login information in this so the users can log in so it was a great training so i want you to go ahead and take a look at that uh, if you do get a chance so we're going to use that same workbook but in this particular training what we're going to do is we're going to give the user the ability to reset the passwords in fact i'm going to build this live right with you right now so we're going to take this workbook i have not made any change other than the icon and the title everything else is the same so we're going to build it right now so i can't wait to show it to you in fact we're going to be using this same type of ability to reset in our mentorship program as we build the accounting application that is going to be an amazing accounting application i am uh let's see let's take a look at the scope of this accounting application it is massive just so you can see what we have done so far i'm going to teach you in this program how to build scopes so that is going to be really amazing as we build out these scopes right now this particular let's uh, open this up so you can see the scope that I'm working on for you it's going to be uh, really training going to show you how to do scopes. so this is the accounting application that we're going to be building out and it's a massive scope right now we are at 34 pages as I build this scope out and then I'm going to show you exactly the stages of how to build out scopes project scopes and of course you can use that for your own projects or for your freelance projects, whether you're building customers for yourself or with customers. So I can't wait to show that to you. I'm gonna bring that to you. I'm working on it, uh, should be done in a few weeks. And then we'll launch that program. Gonna be an amazing training, teaching you how to design, develop, and deploy your own Excel applications. All right, let's get into the training. So what I basically want to do is I've got a login system as previously trained and users have the ability to add a an username, password, and log in. But as what is so common in, you know, in websites, users tend to forget their passwords. And this is, puts a lot of additional, when we have this in Excel, then they would require them to message the administrator, ask them to change their password. So it can, if you're using, a, you've got a lot of users, this could put a strain on your administrator. But what I wanna do is I wanna give the user the ability to reset the password and I want to give the administrator the ability to turn this feature on or off. So we're going to add that in right now. We're going to show you it's going to be fully automated so that the passwords can be changed. And of course, this would require email addresses too. So let's get into the admin and show you what we previously, well, all we have is a list of users, username, passwords, and whether they're admin. I want to add on to this. In order for the users to reset their own password, of course, that needs to be emailed. And we want to add an email. And I also also want to add in the ability of course this is an admin screen only the administrator would be able to see this so I want to add in a setting that would allow the administrator to turn on or off this feature so let's add that in right now allow users to reset password okay so I'm going to make that an option I also want to add an email onto this 
So we want to add the ability to email. So users can have email. So that's really important. All right, let's update this table. I'm going to format the cells and update the border accordingly with that thick border all the way around. Then I'm going to just add in the dotted line on the left. So you can see how we quickly format this table, bring it up to look the way it should. And then I'll put a top border here just as we have it here. And we'll merge and center this, unmerge it, and then remerge and center this so that we can. All right, so now we have the ability to add in an email address here along with it. That's important. If we're going to be giving the users the ability to, to reset their own passwords, we want a send a key, a specific key to them, probably something like a temporary password or a reset key to them. So we want to be able to email that to them. If they don't have their email address, of course, they wouldn't be able to do that. So that's the key. That's why we need the email address and the admin sets the email. So that's really important. All right. Now we have a space for the email and I also have a space for them. And I want to put in the yes or no. Give the admin the ability to turn this feature on or off. So we're going to put in a data validation here under data and data validation. I'm just going to give it a yes or no validation. Under the allow, we're going to create a list and then we're just going to create two different options. Yes and no. That's all we really want here. So now we have the ability to choose yes or no. We'll turn it on for yes and then I'm going to merge and center this, update this table and I'll go ahead and color this just so we have that consistent color. Okay, and put a border around it so it makes it look nice. Now we have the ability in the admin to, to turn this on or off. And I want that because sometimes you may not want it. You may not want to give the user the ability to turn this feature on. Sometimes you may. So this gives us the control. And what we're going to do in the pop-up screen is we're going to have a little text that says allow the user to reset the password or not or forget password or something like that. Okay, so now we've got the email address. And let's just go ahead and add in my email just so we have an email address under there so now you can see we have an email address I also want to add some more fields we need to know what the reset user password name is so let's put in reset username because I want to know if they put in their username we need to pull in so example we say do you want to reset your username they say yes they say we say put in your username because we need to make sure that we have an email address so we need to have a field for that so we'll put that here and then I also need to know the row that that's on. For example, if we put in Randy here, I need to know the row of this. And so we need to put in the reset user row here. I need to know the row of this. And we can easily use a match, but we'll do if error equals if error in case it's not, in case it's blank. And then we'll do the match. What I want to do is I want to, what I want to look up, I want to look up this. I want to look up this value, username, and I want to look it up into a named range that we already have under username. So if we look in this username, this is the list of usernames, and we have that here automatically here on our list of usernames. And then I want an exact match, so we're going to put zero, comma, zero. And then that's going to give us an exact match. And then what if it's if it's an error? I just want to put double quotes. That way there's no error message. So that means it's going to be blank if there's an error. So that means it's going to tell us the row number. But this is not really the row number. This is the first value. I want the row number. How do we get the row number? We add four. Since Randy's on the f row five and it's coming up one because it's the first value. So let's do that. Let's add five plus four. Excuse me. Plus four is going to get us five. Now we have the row number, okay? And of course, if it's blank, it's gonna be empty, which is exactly what I want. What else do we need? Well, I need to know what the, the email is. If we're gonna be sending it out, I need to track the email. So we can do that user email based on that. All right, so we've got that. And I wanna know what that email is. I wanna put whatever, when they put in the username here, I want the email to display it here. Well, how do we do that? Well, we can, again, just use uh, probably an index match. And of course, wrap that around it. If error, if error, okay. Index. What are we indexing? Well, I'm going to index all the emails. So let's highlight those. I'm going to index all the emails. And then what is the row number? We'll just use the match again because we need to know the match in the table. Match. We'll just use that again because I don't want. We could do five minus one. We want one in this case. So we're going to look up again, Randy, because this is going to be the row. And then we're going to look up the array again. We're going to do usernames and then zero we need a match type zero and then what is the column columns one again so one we've already 
one. All right, so then what if it's an error? Double blanks. Now we built that formula. Again, let's look at that error. If there's an error, there's gonna be double blanks. We're gonna index. What are we indexing? We're indexing the entire email column. What row are we gonna find? We're gonna find this row. Remember, we wanna return one because we're starting our index on this. We're starting our index in five. So if we were to use row five, it would return the fifth one down. We don't want that. Next up, we want an exact match, and we want the first column since we're only indexing one column. And if there's an error, we're just gonna return blank. That's gonna get us our email address. As soon as we remove that, both are gonna go blank because it's errors. Okay, good, because now I have their email address. What else do I want? I want a space for the temporary password, or temp let's just call it temporary key. Okay, they'll call it reset key. Let's call it reset key because what I want to do is I want to generate a random reset key. And then I want to have that reset key emailed to them. Then I want to take that reset key. I want to plug it in. I want to see if it's a match. If it's a match, give them the ability to put in a new password. I'm going to walk you through all that right now. So this is the place we're going to put that reset key right here. Let's highlight these a little bit differently so we know what we're working with. Okay. And uh, now we see these are, these are all the fields for the reset. Now that we have all those, we've got our email address, we have our, we can expand this, and now let's go and start working on our forms. Okay, so we've got everything here in the admin that we need, which is perfect. So as we see, we've got a login. When we click login, we've got a form. What I want to do is I want to add a text to this form. So let's go into the VBA, and I want that text at the bottom, and I want it to say something like, forgot password, and then with a question mark, just like you would if you were to log into a website. That's the, what I'm trying to do. So let's go into the Developers tab and go back into the form and edit those forms, those user forms. If you don't have the Developers tab open, of course, you can find it here under the Options and then the uh, Customize ribbon and make sure you select the developer right here. Okay, moving on. Let's go into that Alt F11 will get you there. And here we have this user form. I've got just one form, login form. This is the form. This is the form I want to make a small edit to. So I'm going to bring this down, extend it a little bit, and I want to add a text field to this form. Let's maximize this a little bit bigger so you can see. All right, so this is the form that I want to edit. Now what I want to do is I want to add a small text field. So we're going to click Label here. This is the one I want to add in here. I'll put it, let's center it. So let's make it all the way across, and then we're going to go ahead and center it. I want to work on the properties here. So let's click on the properties. And uh, I want to scroll down here, and I want to first I want to center it. So we'll double click here. I want to go into the font, and I want to make some changes here. I want to make it a little bit bigger. It's currently 8, 10. I want to make it oblique. And I also want to underline it, and then I want to give it a color blue. So let's take a look at the palette, and then let's give it a blue color. All right, that's about right. And I want to give it a name, the first name, just in case. So we got forgot password link. And then the text that I'm going to sign, I just want to say forgot password with a question mark. So that's good there. Okay, great. So now we've got that, and what I only want this to display if the user has said yes. So that's going to be on the initialize form. So when we double click this form, we don't need that. All right, so what do we want to happen? When we initialize, when we activate this form, we want to run a check. So let's go into the user form and then activate. This is what we want to focus. When it activates, we want something to happen. We want to run a check. If that field is yes, we want to show that text. If it's no, then we don't. So we can write some code. If sheet two dot range g2 dot value equals yes then and then what do we want to do that would be show reset password text that's what I want to happen and if and then else so if if it's a uh, yes then what do I want to do I want to display that text so forgot password link that's the name that we assign to that dot visible equals true and what if it's false? What if it's not yes? Then I want to hide it. Forgot password link dot visible equals false. All right, so that's pretty much all we have to do. And if, okay, so let's test it out and see how that looks. All right, go back into the login screen, login, forgot password, okay, that's showing up. Now go back into the admin, change this to no, 
back into login and we see that that text is no longer there. So that gives the user the ability if not. So now that we have that, let's focus on what happens when a user clicks that. Well, what do we want to happen? Well, what I want to happen is I want to have, first of all, I want to give them a confirmation. So for example, when they click it, I want to say, are you sure you want to reset your password? So let's focus on that right now. What happens when they click that? So back in to our VBA code, we want to go back into the code here and see what they have, what happens when they click on the link. So here we have it. So we want to find out that forgot password and what happens when they click it. That's what we want to focus on. Forgot password. So when they click it, something's going to happen. Well, what do we want to happen? I want to first run a message box. If message box, I want to create, what do I want to say? Would you like to have a password reset email sent to you? Sent to you. And then this gives them uh, the option comma. And then that says yes, VB, yes or no. We'll give them the option VB, yes or no. And we can close this property for now. So, and let's give it a title. We want to give it a title. So we can call it uh, reset password reset password that's the title on our pop-up message box equals VB no then we're gonna exit the sub so it's a VB no then exit the sub then exit sub so that gives them the out just in case they want to see what happens and they don't really want to reset it so that gives them the option to get out okay so but what if they do in that case what I want to do is I want to hide this login form so let's hide it I want to hide that they're not gonna need login form that's the name of this form dot hide I want to hide that the first thing and next what I want to do is I want to create a brand new form and I want to display that form so let's call that send password reset dot show it doesn't exist yet so it's not going to come up so let's create it now right click insert user form and I want to give it that name, right? So let's back into the properties and we want to give it a specific name. Let's call it send password reset. That's the name we just assigned. And let's give it a color of, let's say green. So we want to give it a back color. Click here and go to the palette and we'll give it a light green. And uh, we want to give it a name also. So if we scroll down here, we can give it a caption, we'll call it send password reset okay now we've given it a name I think that's good enough give it a title so clicking on here we'll give it a title again extend it all the way over here bring that title and I want to center that title and give it a name let's just call it the name send password reset password reset I want to center that so the text align double click on that that's going to bring it to the center Go back into our font here, currently to home, which is fine, but I want to increase it to maybe 14, give it a bold, and that should be okay. Send password reset. Okay, that looks good. Now, what I want to do is I want to have them put in their username because that username is going to check for an email. We need to make sure there's an email, so we want to put in there, but let's make this uh, opaque and transparent, not get out of opaque. Now, let's create a new label, call it enter username. We want to prompt the user to enter a username. So let's do just that and call this enter, enter user. So now we've got that. We also want to make that bigger. It's very hard to see. So again, with this back into the font and we'll click on the font and make this uh, bigger, maybe let's say 11. Okay, that looks good. And then I want to write justify that just so it looks better, write justify. All right, so now we have that. We can bring shrink it down a little bit in case they have a long username. Now we want to enter a field, create a field. So let's create a text box here and give it give it enough space. And we want to make sure we always name this user name box, okay, just so we know. And uh, now that we have a username box, we want to also increase the font on this, otherwise it's going to be too small. So into the font, again, we'll go back to size 11 and we can also default this to make it a line left okay line left is good so all right, that's good all right so now let's create some buttons on that i would like to create a brand new button just so we have the ability so let's click on the command button 
and create a send reset key button. So send reset key. So also we're going to increase the font, make that look a little bit better. We, we don't want to have that. So going back into the font on this button, I'm going to make this 12 probably bold here. Let's see if it fits in. That's good. And uh, give it a back color of dark green, and then we'll give it a white font, something that's a bit too dark. Uh, and then a white font on that, so it's easy, something clear. We also want to give the user the ability to so send reset key, that looks good. And then we'll also copy that, control C, control V, and then I'm going to make a cancel button, give the user the ability to cancel out of that. So then we also want to make sure we name these buttons properly. So cancel, we can make that button small. So now we have two buttons, and we're going to call this one cancel button. And then I'm going to make this send key button. Send key button. Okay, so now we've got our form pretty much set. It's not the prettiest form, but it'll it'll work just fine for our purposes. So I want them to enter the username and then send the rekey. And we're going to check to make a few things. So now we've got this. So now let's go into this particular form and see what we need to do. Before we do that, let's go back into the login form. I'm going to go into the code and make sure view code so make sure we have now before we hide this i want to make sure that we unload the send password reset so that means this brand new form i want to make sure to clear all the fields so we can do that using unload unload send password reset what that's going to do is clear the form that we're going to be in case there was any form fields that were seen so before we show this form we are going to clear all the fields unload send password will clear all the fields in that so we've done that now we're ready to go let's just test it out and see how it's working login forgot password all right send let's rename this so it's not i want send not sent send okay now we got it now let's play it okay forgot password and there we go, that's working perfectly. So now we have send password reading, and that's exactly the way we want it. Perfect, so it shows up just fine. Test it again, login, forgot password. Would you like to have this password resent email to you? Yes, and then send it. Okay, so that's gonna work good. So far, we've got, got it working good. Now let's continue on with our code and start building these features out. So back into the send, and we wanna view the code here. Here we have not much health score. There's nothing going on here, so we want to build out some of the code in here so we can get those features. So the first thing we want to do is let's we can build out the cancel button. So if the user cancels it, what do I want to happen? I just want to hide that form. So so we're gonna send password reset dot hide. We'll hide that form. So if they press cancel, uh, it hides the form and does nothing else. Next up, what do I want to do? Well, I want to do some actions. What if they click on the send key button? I want to run some checks as soon as they click that button. The first thing I want to do is check for a proper username. So let's do that just now. We're focused on sheet two. With sheet two, that's what we're going to focus on. Check for Okay, so we check for the proper username. How do we do that? Well, we want to make sure to place the username. I want to put that username right here, B11. The username that they entered, put it right there. So how do we do that? Sheet dot range, we've already put in B11 dot value equals, what does it equal? It equals our name. Let's take a look at the field value we said. We called it username box right so that's the one we want to go username box dot what do we want value so the value of that we want to put into b11 that's going to take that username and put it in there and then i want to calculate the sheet dot just in case those formulas i want to make sure to calculate that that's that way this formula and this formula are calculated and as soon as it's a proper username those are going to have values what if it's not a proper value they're going to be blank so that's how we run a check as soon as we put the username in b11 we get a proper row and we get a proper email so the first thing we're going to do is make sure that b12 is not blank that's how we're going to test it out so let's do that right now if sheet 2 dot range b12 dot value equals empty then what do we want to do then we say we want a message box let the user know that the improper username message box 
please enter a correct username. Exit sub. Nothing else to do. Exit sub. We just want to exit. Keep the form open and just exit the sub. Okay. So now, assuming that B12 is not empty, we can move on. And so let's do this right now. Then what I want to do is I want to run a macro and I want to hide the username. So let's let's create a macro, a brand new macro that's going to help us insert. Okay. We're going to have a brand new module. We'll create some modules here. And we're going to call this send password module. Send password email. Okay, that's going to be the module. And we can create a brand new macro called send sub send reset key. Okay, that's going to be a brand new macro that's going to send the key. So we can use that macro name back in our sender so we go back into the view code so what do we want to happen i want to send run that macro which sends a key and i also want to hide this form this form that we're we we, we no longer need to send password reset dot i want to hide that form okay so now we're done now that's now that macro is done so this will run the macro although we haven't written the macro yet as soon as we know the username is good and with the next one, we'll double check on the email too. So let's go back into this send the macro that we're now going to work on. This is the macro that's going to actually send the email. Okay, so let's start writing this macro that's going to send the user the reset key. If we're going to dimension the password text, we need to create a random text. And I'm going to show you how we do that as a string. So we're going to create that password text that's going to allow us. And we're going to dimension the password count because I'm going to create an eight character automated and random unique control key so i want to create i want to count the number of characters so i'm going to show you how to do that password count as long and of course for the email we're going to mention the outlook application as an object in late binding and the email as well dimension outlook email let's just call it outlook mail as an object we're going to focus on sheet two so with sheet to. Now we can start writing our code. I want to make sure that the password text, just in case, password text equals empty. Just going to empty, clear that out because we need to reset the password text. And the first thing, of course, we can't send an email if there's no email address. So we want to make sure that there actually is an email address. So we check for address. If dot range E B13, remember B13 is where our email is located right in here. B13, I want to make sure that's not blank so we can, can actually send them. B13 value equals empty, then what? Then, then what? Message box, let's let the user know. Message box, there is no email address associated with this user okay and then exit sub so that way in case there's no email address there's there's nothing we can do okay moving on now assuming that there is we can focus on creating our new unique key so I, i'm going to put it right here our re our reset key is going to be located in b14 so i want to clear out b14 in case there was any old reset keys so dot range b14 dot clear contents clear old reset key so that's important because that's what we're going to show now what i want to do is i want to generate a unique key and i want to make that key eight characters so what i want to do is i want to create a random key all in letters okay all alphanumeric basically a b c and i want them all capitalized so now what if, what do we mean by that how do we do that well the first thing what i want to do is i want to find get a random alphabet so let's let's focus on a few things here so that that's going to help us so what i want to do is i here's a character set in microsoft website here so the character character set i want to generate a character starting with a and going to z well this character code is 65. so if i generate a random number between 65 and 90 that's going to correspond to a letter right let's let's take a look at how that might work just so we can focus on the, just so we can see exactly how that might what i'm trying to do here let's go back into the vba code here and just write a, a simple macro sub test okay so message box character all right let's just say 70 character 70 
Okay, so now when we run this macro, it's going to generate F, right? F. So what I want to do is I want to randomize this number all the way between 65. Of course, 65 is A and 90 is Z. So if I'm going to create a random bunch of characters, eight of them, we run that, we see that's Z. So what we want to do is we want to randomize this number. I want to random, then I want to build up this text. So if the first one, whatever it is, and I want to start building this eight character. So I need to make this number random. Well, how do we use random? Let's take a look in the website and see what how we focus on random. How do we use random? This is a great set, tech on the net. And if we look in here, random integer, what do we need to do? We need to use the integer. We have an upper bound, that means the top. What would be the top in our case? Our case it would be 90 because it's Z. And the lower bound, in this case, it would be 65, that's A. So this is gonna generate a random number between 65 and 90. That's what I want. That's exactly what I want. So we can use that in our code. So what if we do that? Let's copy that and let's add that into our code let's update the code here and what we're going to do is instead of 90 we're going to replace this we're going to paste that in here and then instead of the upper bound we're going to put in 90 and 65 and then again 65 the lower bound so we're going to replace the lower bound and the upper bound with the actual quantities now let's go ahead and run this macro and we see we have the letter s and then we have the letter whatever it's random and so we get random letters perfect so that's one so now all we need to do is take this and build out eight different characters so we can do that with a loop right we loop eight different times and we generate a we generate this string of random letters and that's just what I have done in the code that's just what I want to do in the code so let's go ahead and see how we would do that so let's start our loop because we want to create a four password count equals one to eight I want to generate an eight character random text next password count okay that's gonna be covered password text equals password text and right because we want to add on to it character and then integer double parentheses upper bound which is 90 minus 65 which is the lower bound plus one and then parentheses times the random random plus the lower bound that's our lower bound number that's the a and then double parentheses all right now I want to see what that might look like let's take a look message box and then password text Okay, so now we can get an idea of what that might look like if we run this macro. Let's save the work so far and then run that macro. Okay, that should be integer, INT. Okay, let's run the macro. All right, so here we have our random text here. Let's run it again. All right, it's again random. Now we have random eight characters. You can see a random. All right, that looks really good. That's exactly what I want. But what I want to do with that, well, I want to place that in a specific cell. So let's take a look. I want to put that in B14. I want to take that. I want to place it right here in B14. So let's do just that. Dot range B14 equals password text. So it's going to put it places, places the password key in cell okay so now we've got it in cell now we're ready to write the email so we've got all of it now we're ready to send the email so let's go ahead and set that email set the outlook at late binding equals what is it going to equal the create object want to create an object what type of an object is going to be the outlook application object outlook dot application all right, so that's going to create our application, but now I got to create the email. Set the Outlook mail equal to Outlook app, which is the object we just created out, and then create item. That's going to create our email. It's going to be blank, but it's going to create our email. With the Outlook mail, what do we want to do with that? We're going to set the two. Dot two. What is the two? That's going to be whatever's in right here. Take a look in B13. So let's do that two equals dot no we can't do dot range because we're already with output so we got need to specify the sheet again because we're with the within the another width 
sheet two dot range b13 dot value. That's the email address. And then next when I hit the subject, subject equal, we can just put some text, your password reset key is here. Do it all in caps. Okay, so now we got seven. Now what about the mail? Now the body, body, we can also set to some text. We can say hello, and then maybe we'll put in the username. And what is the username? Sheet two dot range B11. B11 is where we have the username. B11 dot value BBC. Okay, and that's gonna get a brand new line. And what do I want? Please, let's actually go to a new line so it doesn't grow big. New line. Please use the following password reset key to reset your password. Okay, and then uh, put a colon and then another. Okay, so now we've got a brand new line. And what do I want on this new line? I want to put in the password text. Okay, so that's gonna give us a brand new line. And what do I want after that new line? Just something like, thank you very much, admin. Just, you can put whatever you want. And now, okay, so now we've got that. Now let's take a look, what do I wanna do? Well, generally you're gonna put send, right? You wanna send it, you do not wanna display it. That's no need for that. You wanna send this to their email because you wanna make sure it's secure. But for our purposes, we're gonna use display. So I'm gonna put display, and then I'm gonna put in a comment, you will, you for sure, you will want to change this to dot send. That's important, okay? Make sure you change it to dot send. We don't want that email displayed. We want it sent. All right, that's it for now. So we've got the end with, this is the end with for the Outlook email. This is the end with for the sheet. And I wanna, I wanna clear out the reset form. I wanna make sure, because we're gonna launch the reset form and I wanna show it, but there is no reset form. So let's create a brand new form. That's the password reset form. Call it insert user form. And we're gonna give this a brand new name. We're gonna call it password reset form. That's gonna be the form that allows the users to reset their password, password reset form. So this is the form we're gonna focus on and it's gonna call it password reset form. So back into the send email, what I want to do is I wanna make sure that form is cleared out because we're gonna launch it. Unload password reset form. That's the form we just created. We wanna make sure all the fields are cleared even though we haven't added any fields yet. And then I wanna show that form. Password reset form dot show. So that's important, dot show. I wanna show that form. All right, so we're done with that. And now we can move on. So now this email, let's t test it out and see if there's any bugs or issues that we've created. Let's run this. Okay, good. It says to Randy, your password reset key is here. Hello, Randy, please use the following password reset key to reset your password. Good. Now remember, this is not gonna display normally. It's just gonna send because you're gonna use dot send. All right, so the email portion is working just fine. You want to save your changes? Yes. And it's gonna launch this user form. Of course, we haven't worked on it yet. So that's perfect. That's what we want. Now let's build out that specific form into the VBA and we'll extend it down here. And we want to give it a specific name. Let's call it reset password form. And with a user form caption, password reset form. Okay, and again, I change the color on it because I don't like those gray colors. Move it to perhaps a light gray here, light green here. And uh, we have it now. Let's also give it a title here. So clicking on it, we will give it a title and call it password reset form. Now we have and align to the center, change the text going into the font, probably back to 12 and bold, it should be good. So now we have the password and I just wanna make sure that it's, it's transparent background. Okay, so we really want three fields here. I want one that says reset key, so I want to give them that reset, put have them put that in and make sure it's correct. Then I wanna give them two fields for their password, new password and the repeat new password. So let's create those three fields now. So the first is we wanna need some labels, so we're gonna call it the reset key, reset key, and we're gonna change that to a right justification. 
also going to change the font once again and making this probably 11 as we have done before all right good so now we have this now let's create two more control let's see control c control v and control v okay so now we have three different labels all right let's make the modifications on those specific labels this one we're going to call this the new password and i'm going to give this one a specific name called repeat password okay so we have those three now and let's make this a little bit larger here same here and the same here so they're all unique let's create our fields our here we have our brand new field so that they can put in this key it doesn't have to be perfect you'll get the idea here okay and what do I want I want to put this is reset key box it's called box reset key box now let's copy that let's actually change the font on that before we copy that over into the font and I'll make this a little bit bigger here and also I want to left justify it here okay it's already on left okay so let's copy and paste this field so we can duplicate it bring it down now we've pasted it down here and one more here and we can line those up on the left using the control and then on our line here left so now we've gotten the left okay so we've got tin those and uh, we'll line it up a little bit there all right it's not perfect bring it down here so we've got the three fields now let's create some buttons for these so we can have that so we can set it up we want to create a reset password a button that says reset password and of course a cancel button so this one reset password and I'm going to increase the font and increase the size a little bit going into our font bring it to probably 11 and also change the color just as we did just so that there's some consistency on that and then the uh, font color we're going to change to white then we're going to duplicate that button for the cancel okay now let's copy that and paste that and I'm going to create a cancel button cancel always give the user a way to cancel so that they can close it because otherwise it gets frustrating for them and bring this down right about here so give this the name cancel button give this the name reset button that way in the code it's very easy reset button it's very easy to recognize okay so now we've built out our form pretty good it's not the nicest form certainly but it'll it'll work make these uh, transparent double clicking on that will do that just although it should be fine okay so now they're all transparent now we have a reset key we have a new password and we have a reset password we want the user to run through those so now we've built it now we got to just focus on the code portion of this the form is now built out so let's double click here and we have the user form click we don't need that so now we're going to build out the these form and there's just a little bit of code so let's focus on this so we can see that the first thing we want to do is if the, of course if there's a cancel button we want to close the form so we have the cancel button here what do we want to happen when the user clicks that I want to hide the form and the form is called password reset form dot hide okay so now we've hidden the form in case they click the cancel button great well of course what happens when they reset now let's click the reset button where is that the reset button here and when they click that I want a few things to happen first thing I want to do of course I want to make sure they have the correct reset key check for correct reset key that's important we got to make sure that they got the email and they're copied and pasted that properly in if right what I want to do I want to check this key right here in B14 with the one that they entered into the field so how do we do that we can do it with just this line of code dot range oh, let's let's go with sheet 2 because we're gonna be focused on sheet 2 so let's add this in with sheet 2 with sheet 2 and bring this back up so we can focus on that just sheet 2 what is our code B14 is where our key is gonna be equals or let's just say does not equal so we can get out of it it does not equal what is it me which is the form reset what what is the name we can reset key box that's the name we give it a dot value if it does not equal then what do we want to do then 
I want to give them a message box. Then what do I want to do? If message box, give them a choice, message box, the password, though it's called the reset key you have entered is not correct. And then give it a new line. What do I want to do? Would you like to try again? Would you like, let's go into new line so you can see what we're doing here. Would you like to try again? Give them the option. VB, yes, no. And give it a title. Incorrect reset key. That's the title of that little pop up. VB, no, then what? What do I want to do? Password reset form dot hide. I want to hide this form if they don't want to try again and I want to exit the sub after that. Okay. And if we're going to actually exit the sub regardless. So exit sub because the key is not valid. So there we got that. So if they give them, we're giving them a choice. We're going to hide the form no matter what. We're going to hide the form only if they don't want to try again. If they do want to try again, we're not going to hide the form, but we're going to exit the sub. We don't want to move forward because the password key is wrong. Okay, assuming that it is correct, we can now move on. So let's continue on. Now we need to check for correct duplicate passwords. Check for correct duplicate password. Now we're ready to check for duplicate passwords. So let's check these boxes and double check the names on those. So back into our form, I want to view this form, view the code, view the form, view object. And now let's give it a name. This one, new password box I've just assigned. Let's see new password box two. Okay, just so we have both new. So I want to compare the new password box with the new password box two. So let's do that in the code right now. Go and right click and then view the code. If me dot new password box to dot value does not equal me dot new password box two, then then what? Then do something we have to tell the user that the passwords do not match. Then message box the passwords do not match. Please enter matching passwords. To let the user know they need to match matching passwords. Get rid of this loop. That's just automated for the do. Okay, exit sub and then and if. Okay, so that way in case they don't match, we can tell the user we need to match and we exit out. Okay, moving on. That means they do, now we know that they do match. If they've gotten past this point, we know they do match. So now we just need to update the new password. So update the user password. Now all we have to do, right. Okay, so how do we do that? We're gonna first, we can hide the form because that we know we get password reset form form dot hide okay we can hide it because we were good and now we can continue on what do we want to do so I want to update the password what I want to do is I want to take column E I want to find the user row here column E and whatever the user is I want to update it with that password so that's what I want to do column sheet 2 column E whatever row here update the password so we'll do just that in the code so moving on dot range E and what? E and what? B12 value. B12 is the row. And dot range. B12 value. This is our user row number. This is where the password. What does that equal? Equals simply me dot new password box dot value. There we go. That's going to update it. Now let's let the user know the password has been updated. Message box, your password has been updated. And then we'll just make sure, please use this new password when logging, logging in. 
All right, so, and now we wanna show the login form. Login form, we wanna show that, show so they can log in properly. And then we're good, that's it. So now we have, we can get rid of this and if we don't need that. All right, let's test out this code. Let's double check. We've got that, all right, good. We've got and with, this is the sheet too. And clean it up a little bit, move on, clean it up with sheet two, bring that out. Looks good, let's run this. Let's see if there's any issues. Password, we have the reset key, we have that. All right, it looks good, cancel. All right, let's run the full code and see how we're going to do that. Log in, forgot password, yes, I forgot my password. Yes, I would like to have it resent to me. Into the username, Randy. Send the reset key, that's gonna launch the email. Let's copy and paste this carefully, right? Copy that, okay, close that out paste in this reset key, add in the new password, one, two, three, one, two, three. You can also put these as password uh, characters and then click reset the password. Okay, we have and if, one too many and if. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, your password has been updated. Please use a new password, great. All right, so now let's log in, Randy, one, two, three with that new password. I think it's the same as the old one. Okay, perfect, it worked good. Let's do it one more time. Forgot the password, would you like to reset a password? Randy, send the reset key. Great, got a brand new, unique, copy that. Go down, paste in the reset key into the new password, 456, 456. Reset the password, password been reset. Username, Randy, 456, click OK. Great, and we look in the admin and we see that 456 has now been updated. All right, thanks so much. That's exactly how we reset a password, give the user the ability to reset the password. Thank you so much for joining me on this training. If you like this video, please share it, like it, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much. Have a great day.